Hey everybody, my name is Chris Rice Thompson. You may recognize me from some shows like Hamilton, Book of Mormon, or maybe some tap videos on here. I'm here today talking about Disney and the Don't Say Gay Bill. If you're wondering where Clay is, he's back in New York in Moulin Rouge on Broadway, and I'm currently on tour in the musical Hamilton. I wouldn't say we're like super fans. Generations of super fans gearing up for the big 5-0. Chris and Clay Rice Thompson have been two dozen times, and they're headed back too. Okay, so maybe we are. But my husband and I are obviously homosexuals. So when we first heard that Disney was involved by supporting the creators of this bill, we were like, we were going through it. It was an emotional thing. We love Disney so much. Obviously, we don't want to support a company that is going up against our rights and the rights of those in our community. Last week around this time, I created a video regarding Disney and their involvement with the Don't Say Gay Bill down in Florida. This is a follow-up video to that one, so if you have not seen the first one, check it out. Also, I'm facing a window right now in my hotel room, so I'm giving you, like, washed-out Edward Cullen vibes. You also may hear cars going by. I don't have my nice digital camera because that's in New York with Clay, but we're making it work. So where we left off, Disney had been silent. They were called out by a number of social media influencers and news outlets for their support of the backers of the Don't Say Gay Bill down in Florida, and uh, Disney had yet to make a statement. As the video I published went live, Disney did make a statement. The Walt Disney Company has come out against the Parental Rights and Education Bill, otherwise known as the Don't Say Gay Bill. And while I'm doing the Don't Say Gay Bill, I had a number of people comment on the video and say, did you even read the bill? It doesn't say, don't say gay. And like, it's just about grooming kids to make them queer. So let me acknowledge those two inaccuracies. Does the bill say anything about don't say gay? Actually, it does on the first page, crazy. And I quote, prohibiting classroom discussion about sexual orientation or gender identity. Okay, so that means you literally, if you're gay, you can't say it as a teacher. Or if a kid has two gay parents, they can't discuss that in the classroom. Of those commenting, it's just the little kids, you know, kindergarten through third grade, also inaccurate. It's kindergarten through grade three or in a manner that is not age appropriate or developmentally appropriate for students. It's intentionally vague, which means it can literally be applied to all grade levels. Let's not even get into the whole grooming accusation. Grooming is a method that offenders use to build trust with the child and the adults around a child in hope of getting you know, time alone with the kid to do awful things. Don't throw around these terms that have nothing to do with safety and gender inclusivity in the classroom, okay? Anyway, back to Disney. So Bob Chapek, who had previously been silent on a great many number of things uh, that were public topics at the time, had remained silent about the Don't Say Gay bill down in Florida. So his first statement that he did make said, we are opposed to the bill from the outset, but we chose to not take a public position on it because we thought we could be more effective working behind the scenes, engaging directly with lawmakers on both sides of the aisle. He said they had been trying for weeks to get this bill stopped and had yet to be successful. Chapek said they were reassessing our approach to advocacy, including political giving in Florida and beyond. They also promised to donate $5 million to the HRC, which is the human rights campaign, demonstrating their advocacy for the LGBTQIA community. So that was the first big thing that Disney did moving forward. While the single step forward from Disney as a company gave me like a little glimmer of hope that there was, you know, a chance that Disney would change their ways, it's almost felt like too little too late in a way. Why did they wait so long to make a statement? They waited for the bill to pass without releasing any sort of opposing statement uh, on behalf of Disney opposing this bill. And that's not okay. They could have used their leverage beforehand. Were they backed into a corner? They were obviously losing a lot of money and getting a lot of backlash from everyone canceling their Disney Plus subscriptions and vowing to, you know, boycott Disney and their parks and products, etc. It's something like 7% of young adults are identifying um, on the queer spectrum. So knowing that Disney had isolated that group and, you know, shown that they don't support them, at least with their donations, uh, you know, it's really damaging for the company and I think they were a little scared. And while it gave me a little glimmer of hope, there's a lot more things that happened this last week that I'm gonna cover right now, but don't give up hope yet, maybe? The human rights campaign clapped back at Disney and said that they would not be accepting Disney's contributions to HRC. So many loud cars, turn down your speakers. HRC released a statement that said, we want to see them build on their public commitment and work with LGBTQ plus advocates to ensure that dangerous proposals like Florida's don't say gay bill, uh, don't become dangerous laws. Then Joni Madison, the interim president of the HRC, released a statement that said, they took a step in the right direction, but it was merely a first step. And I agree, one step in the right direction does not equal the marathon that they need to run 
or does not equal them getting to the finish line, but it is a step, you know, at least it's in the right direction versus the wrong direction. The Disney responded to the HRC with a statement. While we are surprised and disappointed that they will not take our financial support at this time, we remain committed to meaningful action to combat legislation targeting the LGBTQ plus community. So that was their statement. And then Pixar got involved. I always get like Pixar and, you know, uh, Disney on Broadway or Disney theatrical, all these different, Disney animation studios, all these different uh, Disney corporations that are underneath the umbrella of Disney. I kind of think they're all one and the same, but I got to remember that they are their own, you know, individual groups under the Disney umbrella. So first Pixar got involved. Their statement kind of rocked the whole argument a little bit. They released a statement that said, Disney is censoring all same sex affection in Pixar films. We at Pixar have personally witnessed beautiful stories full of diverse characters come back from Disney corporate reviews, shaved down to crumbs of what they once were, AKA they're censoring all the queerness out of the stories and leaving them with crumbs. Disney's first response to that LGBTQ plus rights issue at hand, we're saying that, oh, we create a better world through our content, our content that we create that works towards a more inclusive world and demonstrates a more inclusive world. That's our best use of our voice in this time regarding the LGBTQ plus rights that are at risk. And I thought that was really interesting that Pixar came back and we're like, no, no, no. Even if creating LGBTQIA plus content was the answer to fixing the discriminatory legislation in the world, we are being barred from creating it. So now things are getting real. Disney's like, okay, we're gonna donate money. HRC's like, no, you're not. And Disney's like, well, we're still gonna commit to making this world a better place through our content. And Pixar's like, hold up. You're stopping us from even doing that. So then March 11th rolls around. This is the day that Disney contacts all their employees and they release a statement to them all. Now this statement to all the Disney employees, this apology feels a little more um, educated and a little more uh, maybe remorseful than the previous statements that were kind of just like, we were working behind the scenes and it didn't work out. This one felt a little more, uh, I don't know, like they had learned their lesson a little bit. Obviously it's not complete, but here's what it said. It started with CEO Bob Chapek acknowledging that you needed me to be a stronger ally in the fight for equal rights and I have let you down. He said, I have done something wrong. I let you down, I failed you. Starting immediately, we are increasing our support for advocacy groups to combat similar legislation in other states. Meaning this is not just the LGBTQ rights of those in Florida and surrounding Disney World that are targets of the don't say gay or don't say trans bill. They're acknowledging that the fight is nationwide and even worldwide. And this is where it gets good. He says that they are hard at work creating a new framework for their political giving, AKA their donations that they're making to political campaigns, etc., to ensure Disney's advocacy better reflects their values. Okay, so they're now saying, we want to support the LGBTQIA community. We don't wanna be supporting those who are you know, passing anti-LGBTQIA legislation. Then he added, as of today, all political donations are on pause in the state of Florida pending this review. I think that was huge. Pausing all political donations in Florida is a big step. But he goes on and says, I know there is so much more work that needs to be done. I am committed to this work and to you all and will continue to engage with the LGBTQ plus community so that I can become a better ally. I feel like, I'm not saying this has been a perfect apology or anything like that, but I am saying, I think apologies do have to start with, okay, I've done something wrong, I'm sorry, and here's my plan to do better. And yes, they made statements before that they're doing better was kind of like wishy-washy, and this feels a little more uh, concrete. And I think it's another big step in the right direction. I'm filming this on uh, St. Patrick's Day, and there's lots of people drunk outside, and the motorcycles are big, so hopefully the people drinking are not the ones in the motorcycle. Mm -hmm. I rest my case. My hotel's literally shaking right now. And Disney is committing to be an outspoken champion of the protections, visibility, and opportunity that LGBTQIA people and staff members deserve. Okay, so Disney was shaking in their boots a little bit, and this statement is definitely a big step in the right direction, and I'm thankful for that. And while it's not perfect, um, I, I was really excited and like honestly like had a weight off of my shoulders when I read those words and I read that statement. I was like, okay, this is good. Not that Disney's out of the dark yet and has fixed everything, but I was like, okay, like there's, that's a solid apology, right? Okay, but that was one day and what happened the next day? That's the real question. At this point, several other companies, as we talked about underneath the Disney umbrella, started releasing statements of their own. Disney on Broadway slash Disney Theatrical shared this amazing rainbow post on their Instagram with a caption that talked about their support for the LGBTQIA community and how they absolutely denounce any legislation that infringes on fundamental human rights. That's really what this is about, human rights. You all deserve to be safe, respected, and able to live your lives as your whole selves, free from discrimination. 
people are really trying to get this video not to happen today. <laughs> then Marvel jumped in. I'm talking Marvel. You know how big the Marvel property is for Disney. On a side note, I do think it's so interesting that so many people within the Disney family are having to stand up and say, wait, this isn't who we are. Even individual divisions within the Disney company. It's, it's just a weird awakening I think they're having that they're like, wait a second, we're all not on the same page here. We have to make a statement to say that we support queer families and queer rights and the human rights of those in the queer family. Like, I'm, I bet they're shocked, but they're kind of like, wait, I thought we were always like in alignment. Um, maybe not, maybe that's just my personal opinion. I guess as Pixar said, they were being censored. So maybe there was already that tension, you know, bubbling up from within. But back to Marvel, um, they released a statement on their Twitter that got a lot of attention online. They said, we strongly denounce any and all legislation that infringes on the basic human rights of the queer community. They said, Marvel Studios stands for hope, inclusivity, and strength. I mean, just think about their movies and all their property. Yeah, that seems like the theme of all the movies. They said that today we pledge our continued and strong commitment as allies who promote the values of equality, acceptance, and respect. Go Marvel! This makes me want to watch a Marvel movie right now. Like maybe Tom Holland and Spider-Man or Chris Evans and Captain America. I digress. And today I'm seeing all these news reports about how Disney employees, both in Florida, California, and beyond, are staging walkouts on their breaks every day this week in protest of Disney CEO Bob Chapek's slow response to the Don't Say Gay bill and lack of public response in using the weight of the Disney name to stop this bill getting as far as it has. Right now it's just waiting for Ron DeSantis' signature to pass it into law. And Disney could have definitely used their voice to stop this. So I understand why the Disney employees that these articles are speaking about, um, you know, are upset. My husband and I were chatting with a friend who's a cast member at one of the Disney parks earlier today, and um, them and their division hadn't heard a lot about the walkouts, but I'm curious to see which employees um, in which division of the parks, etc., cetera, um, how the employees talking and where those walkouts are actually gonna take place. And any Disney cast members that may be watching this, that this may all be old news. <laughs> I just wanna let you know that I stand in solidarity with you as you're doing these protests and I support your rights and um, I appreciate you using your voice and your, uh, your physical being to do these walkouts uh, and protest. I think it's really awesome. So where does that leave us? On one hand, I'm really excited about the potential of what is ahead now that Disney has apologized you know, to their staff members and their cast members. I think that Disney's uh, name and weight is important. And if Disney could like be the leader of supporting queer communities, that could be amazing. And if they should be already doing that because they're you know, marketing towards us, which we talked about in the last video. But um, that gives me hope. And I think there is a world in which that could be the case. On, on the other hand, I'm really excited and proud of all the cast members who have, you know, written letters and are using, you know, their voice as we talked about in protest, letting Disney know that the way they've gone about responding to this bill um, was far from perfect, was actually rather imperfect, you know. So that's where we're at right now. I'm holding out hope and also really proud of everyone that's using their voice to fight for good. So please continue to tag Disney on all your accounts and let them know how you're feeling right now. And I'm holding out hope that Disney turns things around as they've said they'd like to, and I'm uh, keeping my fingers crossed. I'll share any more news that pops up on this channel, but of course, my husband Clay and I are going to be back with some new vlogs in just a couple days, so stay tuned and click the subscribe button, the like button, and I'll see you real soon. Go make this world a better place. Thanks for watching.